Hey, what's up guys, it's Finbonk, and welcome back to the 8th Slime Keep devlog. But before we get in this devlog, I want to say one thing. From now on, I'm going to try to make sure I focus more on the core mechanics for the game instead of polish. Previously, I feel like I made some really cool changes in polish, but in the end, they aren't totally necessary for the minimum viable product of Slime Keep, and I'd rather focus on getting this game to a somewhat playable state as soon as I can rather than focusing on small touches of polish. I've got a massive list on my Trello board of enemies, weapons, and small effects to improve the game feel and gameplay, so just know that I read a ton of feedback whether it's on my Discord or comments sections, but these next few devlogs, I'm trying to make sure I focus on essential things rather than polish or new enemies, just so I can get this game as playable as soon as possible. I'll still probably make a few small changes here and there, but I just want to get this out here, so thanks for understanding. So the first thing I started working on was actually a shadow for all my different slimes, and I think this effect would make them look so much better. I got so much feedback in the comments, I got a million different comments of people saying I should add a shadow to the under the slimes. So I did do this, I started working on a kind of shadow, I watched a tutorial online, and eventually I had something looking like this. You can see I had the shadow done, but something looked kind of off, and it just didn't look right in general. Thankfully I got a lot of really good feedback from my discord server and eventually my new plan was to have the regular slime show up with no shadow Then, as he would jump he would have a bit of a shadow form underneath him and then as he would jump again and get higher in the air the shadow would become even larger and as he would get even higher the shadow would become farther away from him. Now I was completely lost on where I should go from this for a little bit and I really couldn't think of any solution that I could actually go to achieve this, but eventually I thought of something that turned out to work really well and I'm pretty happy that I actually thought of this. Pretty much what I would do is just attach an animation to every single slime inside the game and whenever I have that slime jump I would just play an animation of the shadow getting farther away from the slime then eventually coming back towards the slime. I also made it so the slime shadow will squash in a little bit when it jumps, and I also made it so the slime shadow sprite will be identical to whatever the slime parent's sprite is. Then eventually I got something looking like this. I think it's a massive improvement from my last slime shadow, but it still needed some work. After some more tweaking, I ended up with this. I made the animations a little more slow and smooth, and I think it's a major improvement overall. Now I had the task of setting up all the different slime shadow animations for every single different slime form, and eventually I had something looking like this. All my slime forms had their own animations, because I just had to adjust kind of the speeds for all the different slimes, but I think that looks really good overall. Um, the shadows are a massive improvement, it actually looks like the slimes have some depth now, and I'm really glad I made this change. Another thing I got a ton of feedback for was to make it so my slimes cannot change direction mid-jump. I totally agree, a lot of my slimes it just looks really strange how they can change direction, so I hopped into Unity and I made it now so whenever my slimes jump they create a new path so they can kind of seek to the player, and once they're on that path they cannot move or change direction. It might not be the most efficient way of doing this, but now as you can see my slimes cannot change direction, so when I move out of the way they just continue where they're going and I think it looks so much better overall and they feel a lot more like slimes. Another change I experimented with was adding a shadow to my player, I know it's kind of inverted here, but I just think a shadow looks the best even if I did make some changes, so I think I'm just going to keep my player without a shadow. Another piece of feedback that I got was some of my bomb slime animations weren't following the principles of animation. I totally agree, somehow I just missed, uh, just glanced over this and totally didn't realize that I was not doing this or following this. So pretty much what this was is every single time my slime squashed down, they have to get wider. And same kind of with the jump animation, they have to get thinner. And I kind of just somehow missed this and so I patched those up, I also made some changes to the bomb slime sprites. As it turns out, it wasn't only my bomb slime sprites. Almost every single one of my other sprites weren't following the same principles, and so I spent a lot of time editing pretty much every single sprite inside the game, making sure they follow the principles. Small change, but it's really, really good that I made this, and so now my slimes just look a little more stretchy, and I think it's a step in the right direction. Next up, I made two very small changes. The first one being that I made my kind of slime hurt animation, but much faster. So now the white kind of flashes much faster and more snappy. Then I also spent some time making the kind of explosion animations for my bomb slimes a little faster just to make them look a little, you know, come out faster so it's more risky and just look, make them look a little more smooth. So that's how they look and I think it's just a few small changes that improve the overall game. Next up we had some more small changes. I know we have a lot of small changes, so trust me we'll get in the shop system in just a second. So the new first one was a new kind of death animation for all the assassin slimes. Now they're kind of been bandana pops up and it falls back on them. Pretty simple, but I think it looks okay. Then I also kind of made a bomb slime rolling animation, and I do this also for every single bomb slime in the game. So I got a lot of feedback that I should make my bomb slimes kind of roll 
So I kind of had this idea where at the beginning of a certain radius or whatever, you will start rolling towards the player, kind of similar to this kind of grenade guy in Enter the Gungeon. I think it's a lot more risky to the player. And he has to actually make sure to dodge the bomb slimes because before, let's be realistic, no one was going to get hit by any of the bomb slimes. I mean, they would pretty much be used for the player just to, you know, kill other slimes, but they were really never a threat because they would just stand still and explode after a few seconds. But now they're actually quite kind of a threat and you have to avoid them. They won't run into you. And this was pretty easy to set up, all I really had to do was just make it so once I trigger this, they just stop moving and just roll towards you, play animation. Really happy with how this turned out, now there's so much more of a threat, and it's a really good change overall. So the next thing I was going to work on was going to be an absolutely massive change, and this was going to be making a shop system. So on the second time of the vlog, I started working on a shop system, but it was really clunky, and the way I was coding back then was absolutely terrible, and just looking at the art, I'm just so ashamed. I think it looks just ex extremely terrible and it totally needed a massive rework coding-wise and art-wise. So thankfully a guy in my Discord server named Paperboy made this amazing kind of shop guy that it gave me permission to use. So I made a few small changes and I also increased the kind of length of his kind of table so I could add upgrades there. And I was going to plan to use this guy to have his kind of upgrade shop and so you could buy upgrades from him. And I just love this art and it looks absolutely amazing. So happy with that how that turned out. Here's some of my old code and it's complete garbage and it's super super messy so I really wanted to rework this to be as clean and efficient as possible. So my first task was to get the upgrade system working. So I first thought about making an item data scriptable object which would have store values like the min cost, max cost, cost, the artwork, and the descriptions. Then I'd have an item behavior script that would use this kind of item data and I'd pass it in and then I would use that data to change kind of behaviors and this is where I could, you know, let's say if I walked over, I could actually buy the item. Then I have a shopkeeper script that would pretty much generate random upgrades from an array. But before I go any further, I have to thank my man Viron, of course. He pretty much helped me through so much of this process again and I really wouldn't have been able to make this shop system without him. He literally helped me so much throughout this whole entire process and seriously, it was so nice having him help me and teach me more about C-Sharp because I still have a lot to learn about C-Sharp and programming in general, but it was so nice to have him help me, so thank you so much to him. So I started to execute kind of this first plan. So I made the scriptable object that would have an enum inside of it with a bunch of other variables. And I also wanted to make like kind of store a bunch of these different uh, scriptable objects inside of my shopkeeper script. And I also wanted to have an upgrade behavior script and I was totally lost after a while didn't really know where to go and uh, no, I had to do a lot of different inherited classes so eventually you know I wanted to make uh, different upgrades spawn in different locations and I was really lost for quite a while. Then I started making some scriptable objects and assigned some values but eventually I kind of ran into a problem. See with scriptable objects I couldn't really tell a good way of you know calling a function so let's say if I'm walking over a extra HP pickup and I want to get an extra HP. Well, I know I know exactly what the code is, but I don't know exactly how I want to run that code and how I can do that in the scriptable object. So I was really, really lost for quite a long time. So after a lot of headaches, I kind of realized with Byron, of course, that scriptable objects would not be the best choice for a shop system. So originally I was gonna have an upgrade class very similar to my scriptable object, but instead I wanted to instead do kind of functions where I could use kind of return different values. So instead of having an integer min rice, I could just do a virtual function and then just return that function. And whenever I need to get that price, I can just call that function. So then I make these different uh, classes that would derive from this main upgrade class. I could override these. They should say min price, but it doesn't really matter. And then instead, I could return different values. And these would also have their different separate functions in them. Like if I wanted to, you know, extra HP it would have a different function that would be called instead of swift boots. Then for the shopkeeper script, here's what we came up after pretty much a whole entire days of work. And we pretty much have an possible upgrades array that would sort all the possible upgrades I can choose from, and an upgrade selected array that would have three slots in it of the upgrades I would randomly select. And then this one for loop took the whole entire day, so many issues, but thank you for him to getting it actually done and helping me through this. And so pretty much select a bunch of three different upgrades and store them in the upgrades selected array without any duplicates. It's kind of a pain, but eventually we got it working and now it would kind of I could show different random upgrades and such a pain but every single time as you can see in the debugs I'll choose three random upgrades that they will not repeat so that was really really nice. 
So here you can see in my upgrade class, I have a bunch of virtual functions. And then in my derived classes and in individual upgrades, you can see I return different values and depending on what kind of upgrade it is. Then inside of my upgrade behavior class, I'd have a public upgrade variable and I could assign this to whatever upgrade class I want. So this could either be a better dash, extra HP, or whatever kind of upgrade I want to use. Then if I wanted to generate the random price, for example, all I'd have to do is just call upgrade.getMinPrice and upgrade.getMaxPrice and just put it into a random.range function and boom, it's pretty easy. And I'm really happy how this worked out and I really wouldn't have thought of this without Brian and Chorus. After setting some more stuff up, I can see every single time I hit play, it'll generate a new sequence of upgrades that will be placed on the shopkeeper. All I had to do is just get the artwork and display it. It's pretty simple and I just still have a bit more work to do, but this is a really good start. And then I set up some more things and this is what I came up with. Pretty much when I press over and walk in this kind of collider area and press E, it'll actually buy this upgrade, it'll disappear. Still not really that much polish. And you can see my player actually moves faster and the bits actually get subtracted. And what a relief, I was so happy that I actually got this working. So many hours of work kind of finally paid off. You can also see when I buy my heart upgrade function, it'll call the right function. I'll get an extra heart, subtract bits, and then my better dash. And I'm really happy with how this turned out so far. Then I made some UI for whenever you walk in the collider zone, it'll display the upgrade name and how much the up upgrade will cost. I'm planning to have this in the future where they'll have the shopkeeper actually talk and stuff, but this is just a quick fix. You know, gonna work on more polish later. Then I added these upgrades to an upgrade list inside of my player script so I could easily remember what upgrades the player has bought. So that's pretty much the upgrade system. Sorry if I didn't explain this process too well. It was a little scuffed during out this whole entire process and a lot of headaches, but eventually I got it done, so yeah, pretty happy with how that turned out. After I was finished with that, I decided to tackle another big issue in the game with something I didn't really realize until I started you know, looking towards the art, but a lot of the pixel sizes aren't exactly consistent, especially in the weapon drops and the house, they weren't the actual right pixel size, just a simple mistake that I had to kind of patch up. I can see now my weapon drops are a lot bigger, you will notice that. They're a lot bigger, but they're actually the right pixel size now, so that's a really, really good uh, step in the right direction. You might notice that the walls and some cosmetics are not actually the right pixel size also, but I'm going to hold back on changing those because I'm probably going to rework all that kind of art, so just keep that in mind. Then I got back to working on the shop system, and this time I was going to have a weapon shop. The thing is, something I've been playing a lot, I'm sure you guys know, is I've been playing some Enter the Gungeon recently, just a little bit in my free time, and I personally really like the idea of multiple merchants. I don't know if I'm going to keep this idea throughout the whole entire game, and have multiple merchants, but instead of having the shop guy sell everything, I decided it'd be kind of cool to have a guy like sitting on a rug, kind of like some kind of shopkeepers in Gungeon, like selling different guns that you can buy like on his rug or something. I thought that would just be kind of a cool idea. So I made this rug, which took quite a while. I think it looks okay, personally. And then I also made this kind of like meditator guy. I don't know exactly what you can call him, but he's kind of just a guy who's like meditating on his rug and he will sell you a bunch of different weapons. And so I think that's just, you know, a cool little place where you can buy weapons. And eventually, you know, I had to follow the same kind of process with the upgrades. It's a bit different of a process, but eventually I got random weapons spawning and now you could walk over them, press E, and you could actually buy weapons, which is really, really cool. I plan to add animations and just overall way more polish to these guys, but just know I'm holding off for that for now, like I said earlier. Lastly, I have two more changes, and the first one being that I actually made custom kind of uh, upgrade animations, something I needed to do eventually. So instead of having the Unity animator kind of upgrade system, uh, I kind of just made these custom ones and pretty much the slimes go up and down. I didn't make any custom frames or anything like that because that'd just be a lot of work, but it's just really simple. I think it looks okay. I mean, it's nothing amazing, but if you guys have any feedback, just let me know. Just go up and down and I'll show you how it'll look in just a second. And the next change being that I actually ended up making uh, all my slimes weren't actually pixel or perfect or they weren't uh, the right pixel size for every single slime. So I had to reanimate every single collider, edit every single collider for all my slimes, which is quite a pain. So here's how, how these things look um, in the end. See, my slimes actually look a little bit bigger now because they're a bigger pixel size, um, just to match everything because their pixel size is too small. And I think they just look fine. The upgrade animations just are still there, nothing amazing, but I'm pretty happy with those changes. Finally, I just backed up the project in GitHub, and that was pretty much the end of the work for this week.
Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this devlog. So if you guys liked the video, make sure to leave a like, or if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or in my Discord server. I'm pretty active there and I sometimes do events there. So feel free to join that it's the first link in the description. So yeah, that is going to wrap up the devlog. Hope you guys liked it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.